So as I mentioned in the previous video, um, AJAX can be used to fetch content from web servers from JavaScript. Um, but by default, if you try to fetch content from an arbitrary web server, you're going to get an error. Um, and uh, this has to do with something called cross-origin resource sharing, or CORS, C-O-R-S. And basically, if you want to allow um, people on um, who are accessing other pages from other servers to fetch content on your server, you have to explicitly say that that's okay by adjusting the Hypertext Transfer Protocol response header for your resource. So in other words, if you're serving a web page from your server and somebody wants to access it from a different website, you have to give them permission to do that in the response header that your web server sends along. And we see how to do that in the PHP courses. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to bypass that restriction. So JavaScript has that restriction. And it's to avoid something called cross-site scripting, where basically an attacker spoofs a different website. But the web server that you're talking to is under no such restriction. So web servers can fetch content from other web servers, and that's perfectly OK. Um, as long as your browser is talking to the same web server, you can avoid cross-origin resource sharing problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a minimal amount of PHP code, because this isn't a course on PHP, um, that fetches a page from a web server and then bundles it up in a way that we can easily um, access and do something interesting with on JavaScript. So let's start in our fetchpage.php, and I'm going to add a PHP island at the top, and close it off. And so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to get a URL. And this is going to be passed in as a get parameter as part of the URL that I used to access fetch page. So let me go back to my demo. So if I type, for example, or I uh, actually let me go ahead and click a link. So you'll notice what it's doing when I click a link is it's passing in a parameter called URL with a value. And that's all part of the URL. So this is called get method on form submission. And so on the PHP side, what I want to do is I want to set URL to either if is set dollar sign under get sub URL question mark then I want to return get sub URL. So this is the same ternary operator as you've seen in JavaScript. If this is true, then I return this value. Otherwise, I'm just going to use a default URL. So let, let me use the default URL for the home page for el eloquent JavaScript. eloquentjavascript.net. So there's the URL, and if they've specified it, I get it. If they haven't, I use eloquentjavascript.net front page. And then what I want to do is I want to encode this in a way that is safe to embed on a web page. And since this is a web page and it has all the funny characters that HTML uses, um, I have to be really careful when I escape it. And what I'm going to do is first I'm going to get the contents. So that's going to look like file get contents. And then I give it the URL as a parameter. And this is going to return the text of the page. And then I want to encode that to multibyte. So I'm going to multibyte convert encoding. And then I'm going to tell it that the type of the page is text slash HTML. So that makes it a little safer. And then what I want to do is I'm going to base64 encode it. So that's going to reduce it to a 64 character alphabet that's ASCII safe characters. So that's going to be base64 encode 
this whole thing. So that's going to return a blob of text, and then I'm going to store that in a variable. So now I have the URL and an encoded version of the page. I want to make that accessible to JavaScript. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a script tag. And I'm going to declare a JavaScript constant called base, which is equal to a double quoted string. And the value of the double quoted string is going to be echo URL. So whatever this value is, it's going to get set inside of these double quotes. And then I'm going to do the same thing with page. And that should be all I need for the fetch part. So let's go ahead and load it and see what we get. So back on my fetch page, I'm going to hit reload. Unknown encoding text slash HTML. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's HTML entities, UTF-8. OK, so I want to encode HTML entities, comma, into UTF-8. So that's saying find all the HTML entities and convert them to Unicode. Try that. OK, so if I view page source, my base is the default URL, and then the page is this long, hairy, double quoted string. So that means the PHP part is working.